Well, hello everyone. Thanks for coming back to another episode of the Denied Entry to USA show. And you guys already know who the show belongs to and no one else. So again, Ken Scott, senior U.S. Immigration Law Intelligence Analyst with triple W, US Entry Waiver Services dot com. And that's triple eight nine zero eight three eight four one or six zero four three three two nine two one three. US Entry Waiver Services dot com. We are there when you need us. Anyway, so I was I got to thinking, you know what? We've done so many videos, but we I don't think we've done one just on the basic uh, a basic waiver application so it makes to me it makes sense to just do one now of a basic waiver application so here we are it's an I-192 waiver application form I-192 and the expiry date even though it says April 30 2021 this form is still being used as of today which is 17 May 2021 so Anyway, we're going to go over the form sections, and this is the reason why we stand out from the discount waiver companies, because we go into detail of, about things in terms of these cases, and I guess I can say that we have the knowledge that a lot of them don't, which is why we have the 99% success rate. Um, this is the third time today I've had to start this video, because i got so many, so many people calling, I've got to keep shutting it off. So I'm going to try to get through this one a bit fast in case someone else calls and I got to stop it and redo it again. Anyway, so let's get started. Fee stamp right here. So when they do, uh, when they process a waiver, uh, this is where they stamp showing that you paid the fee. And you guys will never see this, but I've got actual copies from the system where it shows that. I may do a video on that one day. This stuff, don't worry about. It's nothing. This is the action stamp here will say whether you've been approved or denied. And again, you guys won't see that, but we do. These are the grounds of inadmissibility here. And I'm not going to bore you guys with all these codes. But for these purposes, we're going to stick with this one, 212. And this is criminality. Um, this is the one for false statements. This is overstays. You do not want this one, whatever you do. This is the terrorism or security. You don't want this category. But anyway, enough of that. And okay, benefits category T T yeah doesn't yeah, doesn't it's not don't worry about that stuff there. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. That what about that. And okay. This waiver is on Mr. Santa Hans Claus. I don't know if you guys know who Santa Claus is. Han Santa Hans Claus, but um he allowed me to use his name. So so, okay, page one of the application, last name Klaus, first name Santa, middle name Hans. Okay, uh, Santa's mailing address is uh, what you see here, which happens to be our mailing address for the Surrey corporate location. And additional names used, we, we often say this because sometimes some people have a habit of using a different name and they forgot. So this is kind of a, a catch-all for everything. Don't worry, just ignore this because you guys will never see this. This is the alien registration number and it's usually nine digits. So we just use a non, just, you know, generic one, I guess. Ignore that, ignore that. Either you're male or female. And I don't care what the uh, new society says. You're either male or female as far as, as far as Homeland Security is concerned. Mr. Claus apparently was born in Wiesbaden, Wiesbaden, Germany, but he's Canadian, which is fine, whatever. Mr. Claus, his address is 2218 Hill Place in Surrey, British Columbia. So back up a little bit. They want the five years of your residential history. So you guys can see that there. And he happened to move into this place May 1st, 2021. And, you know, he lives in good old Surrey. His prior address was 1550 72nd Avenue in Surrey. And postal code, all that good stuff, Canada. So he moved there May 1st, 2006, when he decided to move here. 
Okay, now his favorite border is the one we like is Alder Grove, which is in Linden, Washington. He's going by car, and he's going to stay one or two, one to two weeks. Now, purpose of his visit in USA, we purposely left this blank because the fact that this has to be completed a certain kind of way, and if it's not done a certain kind of way, you could really screw up a waiver application, or screw up the screw up the client. And the reason why we left it blank. Because the discount waiver companies are always searching, circling like sharks, looking for ways to make money off us. So, as I always say, they can bite the big one. And it's unfortunate for you guys that we have to kind of do this stuff. But this part has to be done a certain kind of way. Like, for example, if they put a certain thing here, but then you want to go on vacations, the border guard likely would say, oh, wait a minute. Well, your waiver is only for such and such, such and such. It's not for vacations then it doesn't work. So this stuff has to be documented, I will say, a certain kind of way. And sometimes for this, we actually have to add like a an attachment. So, and let's do it this way. Okay, do you believe you may be inadmissible? Yes or no? This ties into the September letters right here. If you feel you're not inadmissible, you would put no, but you have to document why you're not inadmissible and this is and, and guys this is our bread and butter right here this is how we can charge the 5,000 plus on the September letter cases to 10k or sometimes more this is how we can show someone does not need a waiver you have to be able to document why they don't need it and I don't mean like having a conviction for like DUI or something like that I mean the complex stuff and apparently we're the only ones in Canada know how to do this and and that's I uh, and that's all I'm going to say on that topic at the moment. Have you previously filed an application for advanced permission to enter as a non-immigrant? It's either yes or no. In his case, this is his first waiver. Go figure. And if it's a yes, then you you know you have to go up here and document it here, yada yada, date file. There's a shortcut way we we do this, which I won't put up here. Again, so the DWCs won't be able to get anything useful. Have you been in the U.S. for a period of six months or more? You know what? In this case, I put yes. And there's a reason why. Because if you put yes here at the very end of the uh, application, you guys have to um, document the reason why and, all, you know, and the period. This right here is very tricky. And the reason why I put this here, again, so the DWCs can't find anything that they can use in their favor. Have you ever filed, have you ever, note the word ever in caps, have you ever filed an application or petition for immigration benefits with the U.S. government or has one ever been filed on your behalf, yes or no? In this case, you know what, I said yes again. Because again, this has to be documented on the last page a certain kind of way, if this is applicable. Uh, ignore that. Have you been denied or refused an immigration benefit or one by the U.S. government? Is it benefit revoked in this case I said yes also just to toss in um, uh, some smoke so the DWC's can't use anything to their advantage because this also has to be documented on the last page have you ever in the US inside outside the US ever been basically cited charged yada 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 that's either yes or no in this case yes so they want to know Santa's employment well he works at the North Pole transport systems in Surrey, that's just his uh, branch location. He's a business owner. We put the dates of employment here and here. They want to know his bio info. Uh, he's not Hispanic. So as far as the U.S. is concerned, there's only five races in the world. And everyone falls under the, one of these categories as far as the U.S. is concerned. In this case, Santa fell under, this says white, but I, I, uh, I often say Caucasian. It's just me. Just my thing. Santa, he's a big boy, 6'4". You know what? We'll make Santa 6'6". Six, six. That's a big boy. Let me save that. And how much does Santa weigh? 365 pounds. Yeah, he needs to go on a diet. <laughs> and he's got blue eyes and white hair. And then look at the other choices. He could have brown hair, sandy, gray, black, red, or, sorry, blonde, red, or who knows what. In different eye colors. 
I haven't seen anyone with pink eye yet. I've seen green. I've seen gray. I haven't seen maroon yet. I've seen haze. I've seen brown. And I haven't seen unknown. Although we had one, we they had one client. I believe she had uh, each eye was two different colors. Go figure. One eye was one color. The other guy, other eye was another color. And that was unique, to say the least. Okay, so if Santa's empl- let me go back up. So for Santa's employment, they want to know five years. So let's just let's just imagine this this is this covers five years. If his employment was less than five years, then you would document it here. Now they want to know about Santa's parents. So his mom, Martha, Martha Kraus, and she's born in Wiesbaden, Germany. And mom is no longer here. Mom went upstairs. His father Hans, Hans Klaus, is fine. His date of birth, and you have mom's date of birth as well. Also born in Wiesbaden, and dad is upstairs. Santa's married once. Santa is married to Carolyn Kringo, and her birthday is. Oh, you know what? I missed one thing here. Let me go back up. Santa's birthday. I didn't have his birthday here. That's fine. His birthday is 01. 22. Okay. Santa is born in 1890 for his way of application. So. Oh. Didn't like it. All right. For paperwork purposes, we'll say. 1980 then. Okay, it's 1890, but the software did not like it. Let's go back down here to the wife. The wife was born 1890, January 12, 1890. Ooh, that's an old bird there. So anyway, so they got married in 1955. She's born in Wiesbaden, Germany. He got married in Wiesbaden, Germany. So if he had an ex-wife, she'd be documented over here. You know, last name, first name, yada yada, all that good stuff. Then Santa would sign there, and I guess date, and applicant's phone number, all that good stuff, yada yada. And the person that's preparing Santa's uh, packet, and that's yours truly, prepares mailing address, phone number, 888-908-3841, info at deniedentrytousa.com. And section for the preparer statement, either you're, they say attorney, but I say lawyer, or you're not. In this case, I'm an immigration law intelligence analyst that's trained lawyers, so I have to check this box. Prepare a signature. Now, do you guys remember when I first said that, let me just show you. When I said these questions up here, like 26, hey, don't worry about that one. USA 6, this one, this one, and this one. Remember when I said it has to be documented at the bottom? Well, here you go. So the very page at the bottom, you have to document it. So this is what we said for Santa for those questions, but it was, it was I think, additional two or three. So those would have to be documented here, here, and here. So this part is very important, and I purposely did not put the explanation that we would have used for the answer Santa's questions, for example, for the, let me find it. Uh, about being in the USA for more than six months, application for immigration benefits, and denied a benefit. I, I purposely did not answer those questions here because they have to be answered and documented a certain kind of way. And if it's not done that way, you will screw the client or yourself. The person is screwed a good chance they're going to be denied or it's going to cause more problems down the road but I purposely left it blank 
because I'm not having the DWCs uh, use our videos to make any more money because it just sucks to be them because when they do your case and, and you get denied then you come to us and we can turn it around you know use our magic which hey I'm not complaining but yeah so basically I want to do a quick video of an actual waiver application right now it looks like this this may change when the new one comes out which it's not out yet so um I don't know, I guess it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. These forms always change. These procedures change. The process is always changing. So the thing is, we keep up with all the changes. So for us, it's no big thing. Um, Batman's pardons and waivers likely won't. So when you get a denial from them, then come to us. We get you sorted out. Uh, I don't know if we did a video on the actual denial, like when a, a denial looks like. I'm kind of inclined to not do that one because... Like I said, that's a service we offer people. We can turn a denial around. And I'm thinking that if I do that, I may inadvertently let something slip about how we can, uh, how can I say, like get rid of a denial. And then they'll they'll try to market that into a service. Because if you don't know how to do that, you can make the denial worse. And you guys say, well, what could be worse than a denial? Well, what you guys don't realize is when these cases are done, everything in here is documented into the database. So if they do a shit, a crappy job and you get denied, that's in the system here. If they put the wrong info in here or false info in here, whatever, that's documented in the system as well. So you, it boils down to in the end, you guys are just screwed. You're screwed. And it's nothing you did. It's your discount waiver company provider that did it. Batman's pardons and waivers and all those names that have the word pardon in it and all that, all that BS. <laughs> So yeah, guys. So and we can go over the again quickly, yada yada, you know this stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I want to touch upon is that you hire us. It's because it's just like if you hire a high end, if you own a Lamborghini, you hire a high end Lambo mechanic. Are uh, you gonna ha hire a mechanic who? Oh, sorry, an auto technician who works on what's a POS type of car? Uh, I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say Ford Pinto. Are you gonna hire? A mechanic who knows how to work on Ford Pintos or are you going to hire an auto service technician that specializes in Lambos uh, Ferraris Porsches all that good stuff so I mean it's common sense right you know case in point you got to know how to document these dates because these dates could actually come back to bite you if they don't match you really got to know how to document this you got to know how to answer this question if it's a yes which quite often it is you gotta know how you have to know how to answer this. Uh, let's see something else here. This you have to be aware of as well, employment, because this can also come back to bite you as well. Because this can actually fall under uh it, that can actually fall under one of these this category or possibly this one. Cause even though this is for misrepresentation, this is for overstay. Because they're going to say, well, sir, if you employ me in such and such, such and such, how is it you had such and such dates here? So, you know what I mean? So, you guys will be screwed again. And I'm not going to touch upon that too much because I'm not giving the DWC anything they can use. The only thing I'm going to give them is another headache. And, eh. Yeah, this here, and you should know how to document this as well. This one you got to be a little, a little careful about. That's not a big thing. But the other ones I said earlier are the big ones you really have to be careful of. And also with these cases, it's not just this application. You also have to know what supplements to add to it to make the case strong. You must know how to present it properly. You must know what, how can I say it? You what? You must also know what things is best not to put in these packets, things that could hurt the client. So when you guys hire a provider, you're hiring someone, in this case us, because we know about these questions we know what needs to be put in there we know what should not be in there that's going to hurt you we know about these categories we know how they're applicable we know how to find them in regulations we know how to uh, ensure that you don't fall under any of these other categories so all that stuff ties in with the waiver packet even your letter explanation your rehabilitation which is key your um oh, another person Oh. Uh, 
All right, guys, I'm going to, have to cut this short now. So you guys got the message. So it's Ken Scott, uh, US Entry Waiver Services dot com at one triple eight nine zero eight three eight four one, or six zero four three three two nine two one three. Um, so like I often say, in the words of my Vulcan colleague, "Live long and prosper."